Hello girls and boys. It's story time. Here we go again. So tonight's story is called Bear and Turtle and the Great Lake Race and it's written by Andrew Peters. Oops, Daisy, nearly dropped it. Hope that doesn't make you giggle. Um, so Bear and Turtle and the Great Lake Race. Let's find out what happens. I think it's going to be exciting. Bear and Turtle. Oh dear. Bear was in a bad mood and he wandered through the snowy woods. His grumbling sounded like distant thunder, scaring all the other animals into hiding. He was not a happy bear at all. Bear did not know that it was best to take a long nap during the wild winds of winter. I hate this snow, he moaned as he froze. It's now so cold it hurts my toes. Bear was brilliant at complaining. He came to the edge of a large frozen lake. It was a huge glittering plate of ice. Blinded by the reflection, Bear tripped over something small and green and fell flat on his face in the freezing snow. I think that might be the other character in the story. Ow! My toes! howled Bear. Looking to see what had tripped him up, he saw a small green turtle. What are you doing in my way? Who are you speaking to? replied Turtle in a long, drawn-out drawl. Well, I don't see anyone else here, Mr. Nought to Sixty in Five Years, said Bear very rudely. How dare you insult a turtle? We may look slow, but we can move surprisingly fast, Turtle sniffed, getting quite upset. <laughs> move fast? Ha! Huh. I could beat you in a race, hands down, even easy peasy pudding and pie, yawned Bear. This was too much for Turtle. Thoughts and ideas raced around his head. Quick as quick, he announced, OK then, Mr Speedy, let's have a race to see who is really the fastest of them all. Mighty fine by me, said Bear. It'll be a walkover. You might as well give up now, oh slithery sloth. But anyhow, where shall we race? Why, Bean Turtle, along the lake, of course. But how, asked Bear, whose brain was as small as his body was big. The lake is frozen solid. Well now, Turtle said, scratching his head as if he were thinking. You can run along the bank and I'll swim along the edge. I will make holes in the ice and pop my head out of every one until we both reach the end. Turtle drew a plan in the snow and we shall meet again at sunrise tomorrow to see who is the fastest, bear or turtle. Wonderful, answered Bear, yet another chance to prove that I am the quickest, slickest fly by fur in town and Bear ambled off, smiling to himself. Now, do you think that Turtle was worried? For how can a tiny turtle take on a big, bold bear? It's impossible. Surely it cannot be done. Or can it? The very next day, the sun rose and painted the sky like a chieftain's headdress. Bear arrived bright and early and did 50 star jumps, 100 press-ups, 
and but this was all by the side of the lake and that was just for starters are you ready turtle he hollered there was now full of beans and raring to go he peered over the lake and noticed a neat row of holes punched in the ice in a straight line heading across the lake. Turtle suddenly popped his head out of the first hole. He's got his swimming hat on ready. <laughs> Good morning, bear. I'm as ready as ever. And I'm, I'm as ready as only a clever turtle can be. Bear had no idea what turtle meant, but now it was time to get serious. He knelt down at the starting point. On your marks, get set. Go! Bear was off like lightning. Each step shook the trees as he thundered past. Why, even Great Eagle would be jealous of his turn of speed. Turtle's head vanished with from the first hole. But before Bear could even blink his eye, Turtle's head popped up out of the second hole. Luck, growled Bear, and he charged on, challenging even the wind as he whistled through the woods. But before Bear could take another breath, a turtle's head popped out of the third hole. A fluke, a fluke, a fluke, howled Bear, who was barely ahead by now. His legs went into overdrive, leaping like lions through a desert of snow. But before he could even work out how or understand why, Turtle's head popped out of the fourth hole. Turtle's head was now ahead. Bear sagged. Bear slowed. His breath struggled out in a little steaming puff as he floundered and blundered towards the finish. Quick as the click of a finger. Turtle's head popped out of the holes, out of holes number five, six, seven and eight. And finally, hole number nine. Turtle's head bowed slowly as he waited for Bear. The race, I think, is mine, announced the turtle. Bedraggled Bear, you can see him, he's looking very bedraggled, dragged his bulk to the finish line. He lay sobbing in a heavy heap, beating his chest and wailing, I failed! I failed! I failed! Slowly and quietly, he got up to, got onto his paws and walked away without another word. As soon as Bear was out of sight, Turtle tapped the ice with his claw. Immediately, eight other turtles popped their heads up through the holes in the ice. They were turtles, brothers and sisters, who all looked alike. Together, they all cheered. Once bold, now beaten, Bear slunk away. He was so tired, he crept into a cave and slept the rest of the cold season. Though, as he does every winter to this day. Well done to the turtle family. It simply goes to show that our brains are really the quickest, though our bodies might be slow. Well, I didn't see that coming, did you? Had you? Did you think, even for a moment, that there might be more than one turtle? And how together as a team and a family, they did something together. And yet that one bear on his own, who was convinced he was the best, didn't actually 
manage to win that one? He'd no thought he would. But did the turtles really win it fairly? I don't know. Anyway, that's one for you to think about. Well, that's it for bedtime stories tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I like that story. I like the pictures. I like the way it was illustrated. I like the bright colours of the turtle and the brown bear. I love. I like the picture at the end where he was in the cave and you could see the lights shining in. Anyway, that's it for today. So I hope you have a wonderful sleep. I hope you've had a wonderful day. And I hope you're ready for bed. And if you're not ready for bed, maybe you'll be getting ready for bed soon. So have you done those three things? Have you cleaned your teeth? Have you been to the toilet? And have you got ready for bed in whatever you wear? I hope you have. Have a wonderful sleep, girls and boys. And we'll be back tomorrow for another story for you all. Take care. Night, night. Sleep well.